Go with me to John chapter 15. Verse 1. It says, I am the true vine, my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Now, what's going on here? He said he is the vine. God is the vine dresser who takes care of the vine and the branches. Every branch in me. So now, what have we learned when it says in me? Those that have joined the covenant right? The world's not in Jesus. You can't say the world is in Jesus. The world is not in Jesus. They don't have a relationship with him. So he said, every branch that's in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more fruit. Now, pruning is something that I learned. I'm not a gardener. My mother-in-law, my wife are. We had these great, beautiful rose bushes, right? And my mother-in-law pruned them down so there was nothing left. And I came home and I said, Chris, your mother killed the rose bushes. (laughs) Well, to my ignorance, they grew back and grew back more vibrant. But what does it mean to prune a human being? What is it when you prune rose bushes, you cut away their identity. You cut away how the world's seen them, how the world perceived them. You cut away all of their beauty. You cut away the appeal of the world. You cut them down so they become different to themselves and to the people around them. Okay? God cuts away our identity because our identity really isn't our identity anymore. It has to be our identity in Christ, right? To walk as one with him to be all in with them. So the pruning has a process. So he said, bears fruit. Now he says, more fruit. He says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me. Now listen to me. That word abide means to take up permanent residence. It doesn't mean a visit. It doesn't mean a vacation home. It means you abide in Jesus, in Jesus in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you what? Abide in me. So we really have to understand this word abide. We have to understand it because he's telling us a couple of times in just a couple of verses here how much it means to abide in him. So we need to know what does that mean? I am the vine, you are the branches. A repeat, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So he went from fruit to more fruit to much fruit. It says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch, is withered. They gather them together, throw them into the fire, and they are what? They're burned. If you abide in me, do do, do you see a point here? Do you see the point, abide in me, how important that is? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Does that sound conditional? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask what you will and it will be done for you. It's conditional. It says, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. What is abiding? It's obeying God. It's believing God. It's living one with Jesus. It's, you know, we, we, we've changed the modern church in a lot of ways, so there's a lot of leeway. I mean, we had the, you know, if you go back in time in history, we had the name it, claim it crew, where we were claiming things in the world to come into our 
for, for luxury purposes. It's completely against the word of God. What does the Bible say? The Gentiles seek after those things. You, me, you, us, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and God will add those things to us. We don't train people to, to chase the world. First John tells us, don't love the world or the things in the world. Otherwise, the love of the Father is not in you. No way to wordsmith it or change it. So we need to understand what he's saying here. He says, if you keep my commandments, verse 10, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and your joy may be full. And this is the commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. Greater love has no one than that he lays his life down for his friends. What's he saying? He's telling us what he's going to do, right? So we need to understand that. We need to understand that principle that there's a demand for us to be fruitful. There's a demand for us to learn and then the world to see something, which is the change, the renewing of the mind, the changing of how we think, how we perceive, and how we see things. 